I'm Jeremiah. And we just want to invite you to connect with us on all of our social media platforms. That's right. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So be sure to subscribe, like, and follow us today. church and I am so excited about the month of February. Not only is it Valentine's Day, but it is Kingdom Builders Month, one of my favorite months of the year. And I want to invite you to step into the yes. This year's theme is called Things Above, and we have a whole host of special guest speakers lined up that are going to bless your heart and speak to you about how you can step into the yes this year in Kingdom Builders, and we can bless the nations of the world, we can bless local projects, and we can build into our future. So I hope you'll join us, make plans to do so the entire month of February as we step into 2021 as Kingdom Builders. Life groups are back, and so we are looking forward to being able to provide opportunities for all of us to connect more intentionally because we want to be growing, praying, and progressing into all that God has for us, and we need one another. So if you want to join a life group or you're interested in taking the next step in being a life group leader, reach out to us at hellorealifefairfield.com and just put in there, interested in a life group, and we'll get back to you. There will be signups coming soon, so be sure and check them out. church and I am so excited about the month of February. Not only is it Valentine's Day, but it is Kingdom Builders Month, one of my favorite months of the year. And I want to invite you to step into the yes. This year's theme is called Things Above, and we have a whole host of special guest speakers lined up that are going to bless your heart and speak to you about how you can step into the yes this year in Kingdom Builders, and we can bless the nations of the world, we can bless local projects, and we can build into our future. So I hope you'll join us, make plans to do so the entire month of February as we step into 2021 as Kingdom Builders.
welcome to Real Life Church. We are excited to be gathering together in this way. And if you are new or a guest with us, then let us know by accessing the link to the communication card found in the description. If you're prepared to give tithes and offerings, you can also find those links available as well. We want to engage with you during this time, so be prepared to comment, like, and share this opportunity as we embrace and open our hearts to all that God is going to release. It's called Graves to Gardens. And I can't think of a better message for this season of God that taking things that are dead, taking things that seem maybe useless, that seem like a waste of time, and turning it around into something that can truly uh, bless us and bless those around us. So as we press in today, we just want that to be the theme of everything that we take in today. As the Lord begins to speak to you in your heart, just realize that there might be some areas that are lying dormant, that you think are gone and dead, that He's going to bring to your attention and be like, you know what? I gave you that for a reason. I gave you that for a purpose. I gave you that to be a blessing, not a curse. So as we press in today, I just believe he's going to be breathing new life into some dry and dead bones today. So let's just lift our voices today as we accept that message, as we accept those new and old blessings, as we begin to see those paths that he's lighting that we thought were a no. He's saying yes. As he shuts another door, he's going to open one right in front of us. So Lord, just do it now. that our hearts will be ready, our spirits will be open to what you're going to speak today, because we know you're going to move. You're already moving now. Lord, just flood our hearts. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Show you my weakness. 
still being moved Strongholds are still being loosed God, we believe Yes, we can see Wonders are still what you do
or they would come across a need and there would be a a miraculous healing a miraculous surge of the spirit in one way shape or form and it was undeniable to those that were observing they couldn't deny if a lame man gets up and starts walking and leaping and praising God you can't deny that and I, I just want to ask you to join me in faith God is going to move us, the church at large, into a time of unusual miracles and signs and wonders. We need to see that in the midst of COVID-19. We need to see that in the hospitals. We need to see a, a miraculous healing over our nation and over our country that has been ravaged by division and has been ravaged by opinions and the adversary has used it and hurt and we need an unusual miracle during this time because there's nothing in and of ourselves that we can do to bring about that kind of healing we can listen we can be there but ultimately we need to call upon the name of the lord and we need him to move upon hearts we need him to move and bring healing and we need him to move the power of God that is in operation. That is his promise. These signs shall follow those that believe. So can we just, we're going to just sing that again of miracles happen and just let faith arise. Just let faith arise. God, even now I pray for your miracle working power.
joy is for when you stand undefeated Every battle you
again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much Nothing else fit for king Except for heart singing through this 21 days of awakening, of prayer, fasting, drawing away from other things to pursue you as that priority as you should be. Lord, our hearts are filled with a fresh hallelujah. As you remove the callousness, the hardness, the rocky places, those points of distraction, indulgences, and worries, and Lord, cultivating the good ground of our hearts. So we, we 
just say we're ready for your work. Continue to have your way in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Church and welcome into our home once again. And we are on the final week of unlocking the path to the promise. And I hope that in the last three weeks, as we've been in this 21 days of awakening, that your heart is awakened to the, the presence of God, but also it is full of his goodness because he's such a good, good father. And today we're going to be wrapping up uh, our series unlocking the pathway of the promise. And, and, and so many times in our life, uh, we have beginnings and we have conclusions. And I don't want this to be a conclusion for us as Real Life Church, or if you are joining us uh, wherever you are. I want this to be a catalyst. There's a difference from a beginning and the end. The Super Bowl has a beginning and the end, and there's a final outcome. But I believe what God has done in the last 21 days is a catalyst in our life. A, a catalyst uh, can be a fuel or, or something that pushes us forward. And I'm hoping that you have heard from the Lord that God has unlocked your heart through his word and you are activating, you are activating obedient faith to move forward into all that God has for you as he has revealed to you his promises and they are yes and amen. And just give the hand clap emoji if you're in agreement with that. Just tell somebody that is just for me. So I want you to turn your Bibles again to Luke chapter 8, and uh, we're going to read through this parable uh, of the sower. That's what we know it as, but Jesus was teaching his disciples, and he wanted to release to them a, a earthly parallel to a spiritual principle that is so important for our lives. It's so important uh, for real life church. It's so important for you and I to understand the soil. You see, the soil is, the, is central uh, to the degree and success of the seed producing its intended design. Soil is, if you don't have soil, you can't have the seed going into the ground. You can't have a root process. You can't have the fruitfulness that comes. The soil is so important to the process of producing a harvest. You see, there's nothing wrong with the seed. There's nothing wrong with the seed. There's nothing wrong with the word of God. In fact, today, you're gonna hear the words of God. You're gonna hear God speaking to you. And 
the seed has to come in and it has to go into fertile ground. It has to be taken in deeply, say deeply. It has to go in. And so to the level that I, right now, I captivate my attention, I maybe put my phone aside, I, I put a, push away the distractions, uh, whatever I need to do to hear this word to the depth and degree that I allow it to go deep is the depth and the degree that the root systems has the capacity to sustain and uphold the amount of fruitfulness that God will produce in my life. You see, the soil of our heart is important. We've looked at three types of soil. We've looked at the 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 uh, the padded down soil, the hardness of heart. We've looked at the rocky heart, the the things that are in our life that God wants to remove, the the big and the small things. The Bible says in both of them that the birds came and they took the seed that was on the hardened heart. The the word of God couldn't penetrate. Sometimes it's just by an attitude of like, man, I've heard this before. Knowledge can get away. Pride can get in away. Or maybe there's drama and trauma that has padded you down. But that, that enemy can come and he can steal that word that could come and break us through into the path of the promise. It could unlock that path to the promise. But because of the hardness of our heart, it can't come and produce what it's sent to do. And then we looked at the rocky heart, those things, those areas that are there, uh, intimidation, fear, anxiousness, anxieties, uh, uh, anger that is unresolved resentment that's being produced by unresolved resentment. All those things can be stones in our life that the root systems can't go deeply. And so when the sun comes and uh, the, the trials come, the word is taken from us. We lose our will to move forward because of the drama and trauma of our life that keeps us held back. And that's not God's plan for us. It's not God's plan for you and I to be held back. It's God's plan that we would produce a harvest. We would produce a hundredfold. Then last week, we looked at the thorny ground and we looked at at Adam and Eve and the stewardship of the ground and how the seed had gone in and it produced a plant or a bud, but the thorns and thistles, the cares of life, the the pleasures of life had grown up right beside it. And instead of uh, weeding it out, they had overtaken and began to suffocate or choke out, as Pastor Renee said, choke out the word that God had sent to produce a harvest. So today we're going to look at the good part of the parable. And that is the the part of the fertile ground. And so I want to read this again from Luke chapter eight, verse five, uh, verses five through eight. And let's read now. A farmer went out to sow his seed. And as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on and the birds ate it up. Some fell along the rocky ground And when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seeds fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. Now, none of us are sitting here saying, oh man, I want to be the trampled down ground. I want to be the... Uh, the rocky ground. I want to be the thorny ground. None of us say that. No one who's listening to this message today is like, man, that's the type of person I want to be. That's the type of relationship I want to have with the word of God. We want the snapshot Instagram picture of the fertile, lush ground that is producing much, a hundredfold what we thought it could produce. You see, none of us think about being the other three. We want to be the fertile ground. But did you know that that takes work? That takes work. It takes effort. It takes stewardship. It takes, it takes intentionality. It takes growth. It takes a tough times, taking the tough times with the good times. It takes a process and a lifetime of working on your heart and cultivating 
the fertility of your heart so that God, when the word of God comes in, the ground is already prepared to receive it. See, you can't just till up ground and expect it to remain fertile. See, our focus today is going to be on verses, uh, verse eight. It says that there's a hundredfold yield and return on fertile ground. That's what I want in my life. That is what I want to have to be seeing in every asset, a, aspect and asset of my life is there's a hundredfold return for what's invested there. But, he, but Jesus explains in verse 15 what this fertile ground is all about. He says, but the seed that fell on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart. That, that word noble, we don't use it in our vernacular or language, but it's, uh, it just means an exceptional quality, that there's something exceptional about their posture before the Lord. It, it, when, it, it's not meaning that they're better than everybody else. That's a, that's a prideful or they're conceited or arrogant. It's that, they, that there's an exceptional discipline. There's an exceptional posture of their, their life. There's an intentionality even right now as this word's going forward that they're, they're thinking about what the spirit is saying to them and how he's gonna invest and deposit in their life. It, it's not flighty or, or, or checking off a to do. It's an intentionality, exceptional quality that they possess. Says, says, who hear the word and retain it. And there's a key. They retain the word. They don't just hear it, it goes into their head. They got some more knowledge, but there's something that they meditate on. They chew on it. They devour it. They, they think about it. How does this apply to my life? How does this apply to my family? How does this apply to my workplace? How does this apply to my heart? God, what is it that you want to change, rearrange? What is it that you want to empower? What is it that you want to correct? And what is it that you want to encourage? And God does all those things through his word so that it can produce a crop. And I love this last part. It says, and by persevering, they produce a crop. By persevering, they produce the, a crop. You know, when you plant something in the ground, you don't see the end result. I don't go out in my yard and plant tomatoes and see a tomato tomorrow. I don't go out and plant corn and see corn tomorrow. Now, I can go see corn at the grocery store, but that's part of the problem sometimes in Christianity is that we don't want to persevere for our own harvest. We want to tap in and pay for the harvest of others. We want to tap into someone else's harvest and take it as our own. And let me tell you something that is empty and shallow and will never fulfill you and never fulfill the promises and unlock the things that God has said for your heart. There's a perseverance that has to be paid to produce a crop. So I want to look at you. I actually looked this up this week in my research. And um, I want to talk about the qualities of fertile soil, the qualities of fertile soil. You see, it's not just dirt. It's not just dirt. Dirt doesn't just get fertile by itself. There are qualities of what fertile ground looks like. And so I'm going to use a, a agricultural parallel to, to, to talk to you about some spiritual values and what we have to do in order to maintain and have fertility in our life. Here's the first thing that we know about fertile soil. It's the ability to supply essential plant nutrients and water in adequate amounts and proportions for plant growth and reproduction. Say the word balance. Balance. I need a little bit of this, and I need a little bit of that. I need, I need all the fullness of the counsel of the Lord. I, I need the fullness of his word. I need his, his rhema and his logos word. I need healing in my life. I need 
I need, uh, I need testing in my life. I need all these things in my life in order to bring balance. Because what happens oftentimes is our heart will gra- gra- uh, gravitate to one thing that we like the most. We gravitate to maybe we're, uh, we like faith or we like generosity or we like helps or we like one thing or the other in our life. And so we gravitate in that life and we, and we become top heavy or we grow into this person that is just a single dimensional person. And um, what God wants to do is bring balance to our life. You know, when I take my car into uh, to the tire place, um, they balance my tires. Why do they do that? It's so that the tread wear will, will uh, wear out evenly. If I don't balance my ch- tires or even realign my tires, what happens is, is I invest money in something and I lose money because it's not properly balance. It's not rolling. It might roll. It might feel okay, but it's not balanced. And so my my tread wears out. And eventually what's going to happen is I'm either going to have a blowout or a flat tire where I can't move forward. And there's so many times that we get out of balance. And so we have to ask ourselves, in my soil, am I being balance? Am I getting all that I want? Do, am, I, am I just hearing the things I want to hear? Or am I hearing also the things I don't want to hear? Am I, when I look into the word of God, am I looking for the things I want to read? Or am I looking for the things that I need? See, that's how you get balance in your life. And here's the second thing for qualities of fertile soil is that they have the absence of toxic substances which may inhibit the plant's growth. Oh, come on. That's a whole message right there. They are free of toxicity. They are free of a heart that is full of venom, a heart that is full of resentment. They don't allow in the, in the ground of their fertility toxic waste. And man, how many times have you tolerated, you and I tolerated toxic waste in our heart? Unforgiveness. Someone did something to us. Something happened in our past. And that's not to bemoan that or, or uh, make, it, make light of things that happened in our life. But I want to tell you the truth. You will not ever hurt someone by holding a grievance against them. You're only hurting your own soil. You're only polluting your own heart and you're polluting the capacity of your seed to be unlocked into the fullest potential of the promise. And you are contaminating and making toxic the soil of your heart. Here's the third thing, sufficient soil uh, depth for adequate root growth and water retention. Say go deep, good intentional drainage allowing sufficient aeration for optimal root growth. So not only does it need water, but it needs the right amounts of water. You can't just flood something out. You can tell, uh, you can tell people who overwater their plants because their plants are alive, but they're turning yellow because they're oversaturated. We can't oversaturate our life with one thing. Uh, top soil, so- soil is sufficient uh, for soil organic matter. Let me tell you what my dad used to say to us when we planted along. We got to get some manure. And um, and that you say, well, you're going to talk about manure now. Yeah, I am. Because sometimes in life, we get a load of manure. And we can complain about it. We can, we can uh, moan about it. Or we can allow it to fertilize or allow the substance of what it can bring to our life to infiltrate. And God will take what is negative. God will take the problem. God will take the manure of our life and he will turn it to produce in us a harvest. How many have you had that happen in your life where God has taken a manure moment and he has turned it around. But here's the choice that we have to make. Some of us are trying to shovel that out of our life, and we need to allow it to sink in and up the roots of the seed of the word of God so that it can produce, and God will use 
what was refuse for our life and for his kingdom. You see, your story, your story, your history, we're trying to get away from it. We're trying to leave it back here, but you need to bring it into your life because your story of manure is your testimony of today because God will produce a harvest of righteousness out of your life just tell somebody, give me some more manure. Give me some, give me some topsoil in my life. And then here was the last thing that I thought was just interesting is it needs a concentrated amount of what we call microorganisms. Now, microorganisms are things that can only be seen with a microscope, therefore the word micro. They're so small, they can't be seen. In fact, up until the microscope, they didn't even know they existed. And I thought about that in, the, in, in a spiritual sense, that, that we have to have things in our life that are not apparent to the naked eye. They're the things that are unseen that are happening in the life of our, of our life. They're things that only you and God know about. They're the microorganisms of, of the, the fruitfulness that's going to happen in, in, in our life. All these things go together. It's not just one thing. You say, man, that's quite a list. That seems like a lot of work. Yes, because the word works for those that work the word. It's an intentional, it's an intentional unlocking. It's an intentional uh, living in faith. It's an intentional stewardship over. It's intentional weeding. It's intentional watering. It's intentional intake of the things that we need in our life. Because if we don't, we enter into a place that we, they call soil depletion. Now, soda, soil depletion occurs when the components which contribute to fertility are removed and not replaced. So you can be doing fine today, but if you don't continue to bring into your life his love, his joy, his peace, his kindness, self-control. If you're not in his word, if you're not in worship, you're not in community, you're not in those places that are going to bring what you need in your life, then guess what happens? You move into what I call soil depletion. And yes, the word of God will go in there, but because the soil is depleted of the nutrients that could bring life to the plant, the harvest is a third of what it would be. You see, the plants yield a poor crop. They don't yield like they used to. And so here's a question. If you have an area that's not yielding like it used to, you may be in soil depletion. You may need to ask the Holy Spirit right now, what is depleted in my life? For some of us, we just work too much and we need to rest. Don't take a nap right now, but after this, I'll nap with you and we can take a siesta together. But we will, we, will, we will be depleted in our life because we're doing something or we're not taking in what we need to nourish our heart. And when I was thinking about all these things, I was like, okay, Lord, that what, you know, show me in your word what I need to show people in order to cultivate this uh, fertile lifestyle, this fertile culture of soil so that I'm getting what I need in my life and I can continue to prosper. And I came across a familiar passage in 2 Peter chapter, uh, 2 Peter. And um, and it says this, I'm just gonna read it to you. It says that his divine power has given us everything that we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who has called us by his glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us every great and precious promise so that through him, you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil, evil desires. Here's two things I want you to know right off the bat. You have everything that you need. You have everything you need to, be for, uh, to have 
uh, to have uh, fertile soil in your life, that your heart is in a condition. God has given you everything through his divine nature. You know, when I go to my dad's house, he is a green thumb. I mean, his backyard looks like home and garden. He can grow anything. He grows trees out of twigs. I mean, it's amazing. He amazes me of how good he is with plants. But my dad has a supply. I mean, a supply. He has a shed that's full of uh, fertilizer and a bug killer and things that can destroy. I mean, he has a whole thing. He has vitamins for trees. I mean, yeah, he gives his trees vitamins. I mean, it's amazing what he does being a green thumb. But he, but he has everything on hand that he needs in order to produce his lush paradise. God has given us everything that we need by his spirit and by his presence and by his divine nature. He's paid the price for it, that we can live with a fertile heart, that we can live with a fertile life, that when the seed of the word comes to unlock the path to the promise, that it's not this wrestling it's not, this, it's not this fight. The ground is already ready to receive and yielded. And the response is, yes, yes, go deep. Let it produce a hundredfold in return. But here's what I also want you to know, that participation is required. Notice what he says. He says that we may participate in the divine nature. Now, you don't have to, but participation is required. A uh, part of planting is participation. Part of weeding is my participation. I have to be yielded and I have to be active and I have to be looking and intentional in my life. And he goes on in verse five and he says this, for this very reason, make every effort, say every effort, to add to your faith goodness and goodness, knowledge, and to your knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. Do you, do you see this? Is that we have to maintain every area of our heart, and we have to add to it. You can't just live in the faith camp. You can't just live over here in the knowledge camp. You can't just live over here being self-controlled. You've got to add to it because your soil will become depleted if you're not adding to it. So what are you, so the question we need to be asking ourselves is what are we adding to our heart? What are we adding to our soil? Are we adding toxic things? Are we adding things uh, that are not of the Lord? What are we adding to the value of our soil so it can produce the optimal harvest? And finally, in verse eight, he says this, if you possess these qualities in ever increasing measure. Did you see that? Increasing measure. If I possess these things in increasing measure, this is what he says. They will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive. There it is. When I add to the soil of my life and I'm in the word and I'm in, I'm in worship and I'm in community and I'm, I'm adding the value of his word and I'm prioritizing generosity in my life and I'm doing all these things that, that are going to add to my life and I'm adding them to love and peace and self-control. I'm adding all these things, these ingredients into the soil of my life. He says that I will not be ineffective and unproductive. Man, that is a word of the Lord for me. I do not want to be ineffective and unproductive. So God, today, would you add to my life? Would you add what I need in the soil of my ground? Would you add to my heart what I need, Lord, to allow the seed of the word of God to go deeply? Verse nine, he says this, but whoever does not have them is nearsighted. And blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Now, listen, what he's saying here is when we hear the word of God and we know and we are examining the fertility of our own heart, 
we, when we look and say, is there any hardness of my heart? Is there any area that is, that is rocky, stony? Is there, are there weeds that are suffocating out the word of God? When we look at those things, but we also say, Lord, what is it right now? I'm not feeling close to you. What is, I'm feeling distance from you. I'm, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling stressed. I'm feeling whatever it is. We ask the Lord, God, would you give me to the soil of my life so that it can remain fertile before you, that I can produce the hundredfold return on the seed and the seeds that you're planted. And when I planted a garden, I'll be honest, I didn't just plant a seed because I didn't want just a pumpkin. When I planted a garden, I planted a lot of seed. So imagine on your return as the seed of the seeds of the word of God go into your life. God's saying, I'll give a hundred fold return on that seed. Nothing is wasted in the seed. There's nothing wrong with the seed. The issue often is the soil. And so as we, as we cl- conclude today on this 21 days of awakening and we look at the fertility of our own heart, I want us to just... Maybe close your eyes, close out the distractions right now and just say, God, is there, is there something in, in, in the soil of my, of my heart that I'm missing? That, that is, may, maybe I've just been through a season of great harvest and there's been a lot of things going on and, and the danger of that is moving on and thinking it was us instead of stepping back and letting the ground rest and replenish and, 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 and that's often the danger. God does something in our heart. And so we're looking for the next thing that God will do. And the Bible talks about there's a season for everything in our life. There's harvest and there's planting. And there's also where the ground just kind of lays fallow, where it looks like God's not doing anything. But I just read, I was driving through uh, the country going back from Dixon to Fairfield over the last several months. And I noticed that I went from harvest into winter. And even in the winter, I mean, they were getting the rows ready and they were putting chemicals into the ground. Why? Because they're not waiting till spring to have the harvest. They're giving the ground what it needs as minerals and stuff fall out of the sky through rain to, so that they can get the most out of their seed in the fall of the following year. Man, there is a spiritual lesson for us there. there. But it all goes back to the soil. We have to be stewards over the soil that God's given us. And I believe what God will do is he will unlock the path to the promise. He will unlock the keys of what need to be added in your life today. I wanna pray over us as we close. God, I pray today that by your spirit and by your grace, as we look at the lack of fertility or maybe we're just living in that place where we've just surrendered to the Lord over the last 21 days and you're awakening our hearts and God, it just seems like the soil's ready for the seed of the word of God to produce that harvest. Or maybe we're in the harvest season or maybe we're in the fall season. Whatever season we're in, Lord, we're asking, what do we need to add to the ground of our life that we can get the most out of the harvest of the seed that you're sending. God, how do we unlock the path to the greatest promise? God is real life church. How do we unlock the path to the promise of the things that you have called us to? Because there's more. There's more than online church. There's more than than a, a house gathering. There's more that you have in our life and a future and destiny for us. God, we are believing you're unlocking our hearts and you're unlocking the path to the promise. And I pray today, God, over hearts that are depleted. They're going through soil depletion. They don't feel close to you. They haven't been in the word. They haven't been online with their church. They've just kind of push it to the side and they've getting caught up in a lot of things that really don't matter. And they've become depleted. Lord, let the rain of your spirit 
Let the truth of your word penetrate their heart. And God, would you give them what they need right now? Just speak it to them. Give them that word. Some of them are stressed out and you need peace added to the soil of your life. Some of you are resistant and you need self-control in your life. Some of us need a, a gift of fruit of the spirit in our life so that we can have the nutrients in the plant that God has put in the seed so that we can see the hundredfold return. Lord, I pray for a hundredfold return on this word. I pray for a hundredfold return, God, upon the words of the, our past, the things that we've, we've stewarded and we're growing and we've persevered because your word promises that we will see it if we persevere. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with us today, Real Life Church. Make sure to check out all of our social media and we'll see you right back here soon. What a powerful time in God's presence through worship and the word. And I'm trusting that as we review and rehearse all that God released, that we're gonna have many takeaways. And so ask the Holy Spirit what he would wanna highlight as you put all of this into practice. Also, just a reminder to be checking out our social media content, comment, like, and share, as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel. We look forward to connecting again very soon. Have a great rest of your week.